Hello, gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of Gentlemen's Club Whiskey. I am your host, Mark Antibate, and you know what we got to do right before we get started. Yep, that's right. I got to put in the plug for my books. If you guys don't have them, you got to go ahead and get them. 50 Japanese Whiskies. This is the first spirits book that I've ever written and published, and it was followed up a year later by these two here. We have... The Ideal Bartender, written by Mr. Tom Bullock, with some additional writing from me. And we also have Julian's Recipes from author Julian Anderson, with some additional writings by me. Now, both of these, you want to look for this one in particular for both of these, the Centennial Edition. If it does not say the Centennial Edition on the front of the book, or on the description on Amazon, or wherever you're buying it at, it's not the one for you to get. These have additional pages and they have pictures on some of the drinks as well as some reviews over them. So you want to pick up these ones. Color pictures, mind you. So these are very high quality and expensive books. They make for nice gifts too, but these are the three to have. Anyways, let's go ahead and get on with it. Let me put this on the floor. Now, I'm definitely going to try to make today's video a quick one. I know I say that all the time and I never come through. You know, I, I mean it, but I never, it never comes out that way. But this time I truly intend to just kind of get inside of here and just showcase this stuff and get on with it. Try not to hold you guys. So, if you guys saw the last video, you know that I'm showcasing my state of the collection. This is all the whiskey and spirits that I have inside of my collection. Part one, which filled the whole counter tabletop, just as this does now, it was all purely Japanese whiskey on the countertop. And I decided just to make that one video. And now that I cleared all that off and got that back inside the cupboards and things like that, now I could show you part two. And part two, I got all of my Scotch whiskeys over here on this side. Nothing special. These are just very modest Scotch whiskeys. Nothing expensive, nothing special. I got my bourbons here. Let me make sure that this one is showing. All right, so I got all my bourbons here. And inside of this area, inside the back, I got all my mixers and other spirits. So I got my li my liqueurs and I got my liqueurs back here. Just all kind of jumbled up together with one another. And what I'm sipping on right now is this one right here. This is the Maker's Mark 46. Let me have a quick sip of this before we get started. Now, I barely, well, in fact, almost totally, I don't remember the price of any of these whiskeys and or spirits that I have in front of you. I could tell you which ones were expensive, which ones were uh, affordable, and which ones were kind of so-so. I can throw that out there for you, but in terms of exact price, I don't know. I guess we're going to go ahead and start over here in this section. I don't want to delay this any longer, make it take any longer than what it needs to be. Let's start with the scotches, and we're going to start with a weak one. Now, we got Johnny Walker Red Label here. This is, I've had this before, and I reviewed it before, but I was not a fan of that review. And I did the black review as well. I was not a fan of either one of them. So I went ahead and took that video down a, quite a while ago uh, and repurchased it and thought that I would re-attack these things and do them all over again from scratch. I think that would be best. So you got to pay to play in order for me to do the re-reviews. You got to have the whiskey on me. So 
went ahead and bought this cheap stuff. I am and not and not looking forward to doing this all over again. As a mixer, this makes for a good whiskey for mixing with other things. This is the Scotch equivalent of something like a Jack Daniels. But as a standalone whiskey, it's absolutely terrible. Johnny Walker Red, quite affordable. And I made sure that I got this one. I, per I purchased this two years ago, I believe. This is uh, that limited edition design that, that has the all red cover on it. And I got the, the black version of it as well. As you guys can see, this is age 12 years, the Johnny Walker Black. This is a little bit better than the red label. I think... If memory serves me correct, I think I can tolerate this straight up, but still I think I would prefer to mix this with something rather than just drink it straight how I usually like to drink my whiskeys. This one I haven't tried yet, surprisingly. The next one, this is the Johnny Walker green label here, age 15 years, blended malt whiskey, and it tells you on the box where this comes from. It says single malt whiskeys, including Talisker from the Isle of Skye uh, for its intense smoke and spiciness. Linkwood from Speyside for freshness and vibrancy. Uh, Craig and Moore, which brings fragrance and maltiness. And Cow Isla from Isle for its big maritime character. Now, I'm sure I'm mispronouncing a lot of those distilleries, but it is what it is. You're just going to have to live with it. And uh, it has the Master Blender's name on here. This won some awards in 2016 and 2017, some gold awards. So, pretty good there. By appointment to Her Majesty the Queen, Scotch Whiskey Distillers, John Walker and Sons Limited. So, actually, I've never had Green Label before. I've only had these two cheap ones. And then I skip immediately from this all the way up to the Johnny Walker Blue Label, which is absolutely one of my favorite Scotch whiskeys of all time, blended, albeit. And the one after that, which is kind of like Blue Label, but even more upper class. Uh, what is it called? It's called King George the Fifth. Man, that was a beautiful whiskey there. Tried it before, would like to have it again. But uh, that will set me back, I believe, a good $500 whenever I'm ready to buy that King George V. Minimum $500, but who knows? The price could be going up on that. Man, I got dust on the top of this box. Some of these boxes have dust on them because I have so much alcoholic beverages inside of my apartment that I don't have a cupboard for every single one of these things. So I try to put my most important drinks and my most expensive ones inside of the cabinets. But there's only so much space for that. So the ones that don't make it inside of there, I tend to kind of keep my cheaper ones out, out on the shelf. But, you know, still out of direct sunlight and out of intense heat and things like that. So... They're still kind of taken care of. They're just not inside of a completely dark place, which I would like them to be, all, all of them to be, even if they're cheap. doesn't matter. Let's take a look here. This is a like a limited edition something that I picked up somewhere along the road. This one is called Johnny Walker Black Label Space Side Origin Blended Malt Scotch Whiskey. This one is aged 12 years, just like the regular uh, black label. I'm going to read this label really quick. It says, tasting notes, prominent notes of orchard fruit, like cut green apple, cask aged for a touch of sweetness with a smooth and vibrant finish. Uh, this is a limited edition space side origin. I don't know how good or bad this is going to be. I just picked it up just because it was there. Sometimes I do that. I'm walking around the supermarket and or liquor store. And if I see something unusual, which this is, 
this is not part of the the standard line here of colors and I knew it was going to be something limited so I said let me just go ahead and pick this one up and I'll try it later whether it's good or bad it's neither here nor there just for it existing is the reason why I bought it and you know I got to review everything good good or bad that way I can let you guys know whether you should put your money behind it or just stay away from it if I just only review the good stuff you know, you got to experiment every now and then because there could be something better out there that you don't even know about. This is Johnny Walker Red Rye Finish Blended Scotch Whiskey. Uh, I believe all of these are 750 milliliters. No, there's 700. I don't know why this box looks so small to me. It appears so small. All right. So this is 700 milliliters for this red rye finish. I love uh, rye whiskey, at least American rye whiskey. So who knows how it's going to taste when the, uh, when the Scot, uh, yeah, when the Scots do it. So we're going to give that a try. Blender's notes, malt and grain whiskeys, including now closed. Port Dundas, aged in first fill bourbon cask, finished in rye cask. Yeah, okay. Finished in rye cast. I was hoping that it was... Yeah, well, we'll see. I hope that this is good. Anything on the back? This experiment is inspired by the bold flavors of American whiskeys. After more than 50 experiments exploring 203 malt and grain whiskey samples, we've created a blend of just four whiskeys including Cardu single malt and grain whiskey from Port Dundas. Small batches matured in first fill bourbon cast are finished for up to six months and form a rye whiskey cast for extra smoothness and sweetness, creating a light and sweet scotch with the familiar spicy notes usually associated with Johnny Walker Red Label. Great neat or over ice, it comes into its own in a long drink with a ginger or soda or in a cocktail like a Manhattan. Maybe I should make a Manhattan with this. But when I open it, it's going to be drank straight up because that's the way I do it. And then I got another one inside of this series right here. There's three of them. Actually, I think there's four. I think I just read that there was four, but I've only ever seen three of them. And I only got two of them. Next one up. This is the age 10 years Triple grain American oak, John Johnny Walker. As blenders, we are obsessed with flavor. Johnny Walker Blenders Batch Triple Grain American Oak is a unique experiment in the flavor enhancing properties of three grain whiskeys when blended with a small selection of malts. It also makes use of three grain cereals, wheat, barley, and corn. For this limited release, we have selected mature grain whiskeys, including the now closed Port Dundas. All right, so it's starting to sound like the other one. Cardu and the stewed fruit flavors of Mortlock. Each whiskey has been aged for at least 10 years in American oak. Influenced by my personal interest in American whiskey, sparked by a spell working in, working in Kentucky. All of the whiskeys selected for this blend have been carefully matured in American oak. They bring wonderfully mellow vanilla tones, soft hints of toasted wood, and notes of spices like cloves and pepper. We also carefully studied the strength of the blend, finding the optimal ABV at 41.3%. This is a scotch whiskey that lends itself to mixing, whether in cocktails or with ginger or soda. And, of course, it can be enjoyed neat or over ice. So there's that. Let me show that off real quick. Triple grain American oak. So that makes for six Johnny Walker whiskeys already. And here goes the last one. I just found this just randomly sitting on the shelf. Game of Thrones limited edition. Johnny Walker, A Song of Ice. Who knows what this is going to taste like. Ice shapes mountains and stops rivers. 
It's an unforgiving force that hardens everything it touches. ISIS embodied by House Stark, giving the North strength like no other kingdom. The Stark sig sigil, a dire wolf, bears its fangs and warns that winter is coming. Like an icy northern wind, it howls its verse of a song of ice and fire. All right, and there's more tasting notes on there, but I'm not even going to bother reading those. The story of this is absolutely amazing. This is the cheaper version of the Shackleton, but there's also an expensive one. Uh, what's that guy's name? Man, the good guy that likes to throw the whiskey on the floor. Patterson. Uh, he was able to collect the lost whiskey that was down there in Antarctica. Got it back to England. He nosed it was doing experiments on it and all kinds of scientific stuff, all that scientific research. He was analyzing it like Batman. And uh, he was able to recreate or replicate the flavors out of that whiskey that was that has been lost to the ravages of time and was sitting in Antarctica for about 100 years. So there is an expensive Shackleton on the market, and then there is a little bit of a cheaper one, which is the one that I have now. So this is Shackleton blended malt scotch whiskey based on an antique blend of Mac McKinley's, 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 rare old Highland malt whiskey. The spirit supplied to the 1907 British Antarctic Expedition. All right. Uh, and it is signed on this gold foil by Master Blender Richard Patterson. 1901 to 1903, the Discovery Expedition under Captain Falcon Scott. 1907 to 1909, the Nimrod Expedition to the South Pole. And 1914 to 1917, Imperial Trans Antarctic Expedition. So I guess all these things written on here. But yeah, discovered in the South Pole. I can't wait to try this. Let me let me open up this and show you guys what the bottle looks like. Got a beautiful bottle there. And on the back, you got some embossings. It says, I believe it is in our nature to explore, to reach out into the unknown. Ernest Shackleton. Wow, wow. And this was imported to Japan from the EU. Wow, this is a beautiful bottle. Haven't opened it yet, but going too soon. Nice little history here on the back. I do got to read this. If I don't read anything else, I do got to read this one. In the early years of the 20th century, Sir Ernest Shackleton led one of the most famous expeditions to the Antarctic, overcoming tremendous obstacles to ensure that all of his men returned home safely. That expedition is one of the greatest stories of exploration and leadership in history and has inspired adventurers across the world ever since. Shackleton ordered 25 cases of Mackinlay's rare old highland malt whiskey to take on his expedition of 1907 in 2007 11 intact bottles containing this perfectly preserved whiskey were recovered from under the ice beneath shackleton's base camp this has inspired our master blender richard patterson to create this shackleton whiskey as a personal and deeply felt project he has combined the best Highland malt whiskies, allowing them to marry over a long period to create an enigmatic blended malt with a dash of body and a whisper of smoke. It has complex notes of vanilla, honey, and orchard fruits with real warmth and depth at its heart, like Shackleton himself. A contribution from sales of this whiskey will be made to the Antarctic Heritage Trust, uh, NZ. This will support both the ongoing care of Shackleton's Antarctic base and the trust mission to conserve, share, and encourage the spirit of exploration, a spirit embodied by Shackleton. 
And then it has the uh, logo for the Antarctic Heritage Trust on here. Let me go ahead and put this back inside the box. Man, absolutely beautiful. Yeah, that's a nice looking one right there. Nice presentation and everything. Let's go ahead and stick this back where I got it. What else am I missing here? This is quite an expensive, I mean, expensive for what it is, quite an expensive one from Costco. I told my friend who has the Costco card, hey, go inside of there and pick me up some of that uh, 20 year old Scotch whiskey that they got in there from Kirkland. I heard around the campfire on uh, what's that talking app called? The one where you talk to people. Damn it, man. Facebook's trying to copy it. Twitter's trying to copy it. I can't think of the name of it. But it's an app. It's like an audio app where you could talk to many people, thousands of people at a time. Uh, but yeah, I heard on, on that app that this is a pretty popular one. So I said, let me go ahead and try this. This is age 20 years. Speyside Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. This is Kirkland Signature. Distilled, matured, and bottled in Scotland. Sherry Cask Finish. Alexander Moray and Company Limited. Aberdeen, Scotland. 46% ABV, 92 proof. Should be a good one. Looking forward to trying it. Never opened it yet. But it's, it's time is coming. Sooner or later. Uh, this is just the box for the Black Label Space Side Origin. What do we got here? We got a Cheap Duars. I bought the Cheap Duars just so I can get this Duars uh, original copper tone tumbler that's sitting inside of there. And this is Duars True Scotch White Label. Really cheap. Bought it more for this than than I did for this. So... Really wanted that copper tumbler. Nice box set. Very affordable. Should be good because I was actually a big fan of this one right here. The Duars True Scotch Aged 12 Years. The Ancestor Blended Scotch Whiskey. I think I've already done a review over this before. And this is actually the very first Scotch Whiskey that Sir Sean Connery has uh, put his name behind and sponsored and did a commercial for. I mean, he's supported Japanese whiskeys, uh, bourbons, and now after that, after the bourbon, well, not in that order, after the Japanese whiskey, after the bourbon, then finally in the 1990s, I believe, he gets around to, uh, or is it the early 2000s? The early 2000s. He gets around to finally doing a commercial and putting his name behind a Scotch whiskey. Uh, pretty decent one. I actually should have poured that, but I'm happy with my 46 pour. Cuddy Sark, pretty pretty popular one. Super cheap, probably like ten bucks or so. Blended Scotch whiskey. You guys probably know about it from uh from Green Book. If you've seen the movie, you just you know, he always wanted that bottle of Cuddy Sark, a whole bottle inside of his room every night. And uh guy would end up getting drunk on it. <laughs> so I think, yeah, all the scotches are completely done. Let's go ahead, start touching on this bourbon real quick. This one is almost completely done. I've been using it as a mixer to make my uh, cocktails, especially hang on real quick. When I was making recipes out of uh, the Ideal Bartender and Julian's recipes, and it was asking for bourbon, this this was the bourbon that I was using to make those recipes with. So, as you can see, the standard maker's mark, 45% ABV. This one is almost finished. I keep it around just in case I would like to, you know, do another comparison again between this the 46, which I have right here and which I'm drinking now, stave profile number 46, and 
this one right here, the Maker's Mark private cask. Now, you know, makers, they have their different associations with different people and companies and stores and things like that. And people can make their own stave profile to have like an original taste exclusive to their to their brand. I mostly like to buy liquor out of this nearby supermarket to me called Eon Liquor here in Japan. So Eon Liquor went ahead and made their own uh, profile of staves. I yeah, let me go ahead and read these things. I know I'm going to mess this up because I can't I can't pronounce some of this French stuff, but let's see. Uh, three baked American pure staves. Two seared French cuvee, one Maker's Mark 46, two roasted French mocha, and two toasted French spice. This one is uh, 110 proof, 55% uh, ABV, and the date on this one is June 2020. Quite good. I think I enjoyed it. I know, I know I opened this and tried it before. Definitely. I opened all of these. Can barely remember what it's like. It was good. Yes. Yes, it was good. But I did like the 46 the best out of the three that I got. Out of the... Out of the stave selection one. And the standard maker's mark. The 46 was the one for me. And that's the one that I'm drinking now. So I think I showed off the three maker's marks. Remnants of a visit to the United States in 2019. I bought like 20 miniatures, which I already drank, but these are the two that I still have left. This is Wild Turkey Spice. It's kind of like a whiskey liqueur. And this one right here is American Honey, uh, also Wild Turkey comes inside of these little plastic containers i'll go ahead and drink those up at some point soon i got them to review and i haven't even did that yet but okay there's that moving along i got so much got so much dust on this bottle evan williams bottled in bond 100 proof kentucky straight bourbon whiskey there is another bottled in bond i think i need to go back for i think it's i think it's a japan exclusive one and it has like a it has like a red label, I believe. It looks similar to this, but the label is red instead of white. And I believe, quote me if I'm wrong, I mean correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that's a Japan exclusive bourbon that's only sold here. And I hear it's a pretty good one. This is recommended to me. I asked my Clubhouse is the name of that app that I was trying to think of. So I asked my folks on Clubhouse, I said uh, what, what is the bourbons that I need to get behind if I'm trying to get into bourbons? And this is kind of like a unanimous group decision. Everybody was telling me Evan Williams bottled in bond. So there you go. And, uh, these three makers marks also came from those recommendations as did this one right here, the Eagle rare. So looking forward to trying this. Uh, Buffalo Trace was another one out there. There's there's a quite a few names that they threw out there, but they said definitely go with the Eagle Rare. So I got this, and I got the American size of this too. Uh, this one cost me about eight thousand Japanese yen, I believe, and it came inside of two sizes. They had the seven hundred and fifty milliliter American size, and then they had a seven hundred milliliter Japan bottling size. And they were both exactly the same price and they tried to stick these American ones in the back of the shelf so that nobody would see it. But I saw it. I got down on my hands and knees. Oh, this sounds so bad. And I looked you because this was sitting on the very bottom shelf. So I got down there on my hands and knees and I just noticed, why is this bottle bigger than the other ones? So I reached all the way inside the back and pulled it out and. So it was the American one. So I said, yeah, let me definitely go ahead and get that. These these people can't fool me. Jack Daniels always need this. Actually, you know, it, get, it gets shat on a lot. But um, 
I love I love Jack straight and or with Coke. My favorite way to have it. You got to have it with some Coke. I think I've already reviewed that. No need to talk about it. And then I'm going to try to go through these four roses, which is now Japan owned by Kirin. Uh, Japan has an exclusive four label, four roses, black label. That's the one that I want to get next to follow this one up with because that one is exclusive only to Japan. And I'm sure you guys would like to know how that tastes. I think that about does it for all the whiskeys. Now I can just start throwing up some of the, the mixers and liqueurs and liquors real quick. This is uh, Angostura Orange Bitters. You need this for flavoring. I got another Angostura Bitters. This is just called An Angost Angostura. I don't know how to say it. I'm probably messing it up. Aromatic Bitters. So I got both of them. This is probably the most important one that you need right here. And I think the Orange Bitters is probably next up. But not as... Not as not as much in demand. I got my first bottle of mezcal right here. Uh, bottle de cobre. Yeah, I'm looking forward to trying this one. Not a big fan of mezcal, but I had somebody talk me into it. I've had mezcal once before at the Virtue Bar inside of the Four Seasons in Tokyo. It was it was tough. It was tough to drink that, but I managed to. I drank it, man. I mean that will that will put some hair on you, <laughs> to, to put it politely. So haven't opened this one up yet, but looking forward to doing it soon. Just got to get around to doing all this stuff, man. I'm gonna take a quick break, real quick, and have me a sip of this 46 Maker's Mark. Mmm. All right. And let me clear my throat so that I can talk straight. Okay, picking up where I left off, this is Monin, this is uh, Grenadine, uh, syrup flavoring from France, super delicious stuff, very necessary if you want to make some delicious drinks, especially if you got your lady coming around and she desires something sweet, you know women like sweet things, make it sweet for her. Bowles Amsterdam. This is uh, Blue Curacao. Malibu back here. I love Malibu Malibu Coke. My One of my favorites. You got to have the Cavassier uh, VSOP Rogue Cognac from France. Beautiful one right here. Half that bottle's finished. You know, I've been mixing this, making up some uh, super expensive cocktails. The original Gordon's London Dry Gin. Award winning, 37% ABV. I use this to make a few gin-based cocktails, but mostly uh, as called for in the recipes of these two books. It calls for the old Tom gin. So I've mostly just been using uh, old Tom gin. This is high wood, 40% uh, ABV gin. You guys can see that that one is almost gone right there. But this is what I've been making most of my stuff with right there. Trying to stay uh, period piece correct to make these old classic cocktails. Uh, Medicino from Italy. Uh, liqueur I think it's like a cherry liqueur right there yeah I need this I didn't use it all that much but I have used it surprisingly Tio Pepe this is uh, sherry I use this one right here actually for cooking not necessarily for drinking there's not so much inside of there this is only uh, 375 milliliters, 15% ABV. But yeah, this is this is uh, cooking sherry that I that I use for making shrimps and making a a, a hilo. Hold on. 
missing something here. Bacardi, Carta Blanca. This is Superior White Rum. And of course, there's some other Bacardis out there, but this is the one that I needed to uh, complete some recipes. Almost done here. Make sure I don't forget anything. This is Martini brand uh, vermouth. This is Italian vermouth, which is different from French vermouth. You need both of them. One is sweeter than the other one. And here is Dolan brand vermouth from France. This is dry. You got to have both of them. They serve two different purposes. Don't think that one could be substituted for the other. You need both of them. Because sometimes some recipes of something that you're making is going to call for both of them. Where you have to put both inside the same drink. So there you go. Dolan Vermouth, France. Martini brand Rosso Vermouth from Italy. And this is the final drink that I have right here. From Barbados. Uh, 2005. This is imported by the transcontinental rum line but this is four square four square uh rum inside of this one and what do i want to say this one was aged at the four square distillery in barbados for 11 years and then it was sent overseas and recast again for an additional two years uh, in Europe in a batch of four cask. It says distilled in 2005 in pot and column stills. This single blended from Barbados was aged in bourbon barrels under tropical weather for more than 11 years. Once in Europe, the rum was transferred into rum cask number 11, number 12, number 53, number 54 for close to two additional years of maturation pretty good i mean if you're gonna if you're gonna do rum hold on i think i had i mean if you're really gonna do up rum i mean you got cheap ones to give to your friends and when you have parties and things like that but when you need something extra special just for yourself you know to share not to share you want to go ahead and get four square four square is the brand and uh, yeah, I've actually talked to these people that own this distillery. I became friends with the uh, husband and wife duo that actually own the distillery, uh, Gail Seal. And I'm quite, quite proud to say that I know her. And you'd be shocked to know how I met her. It was through, uh, what the hell is the app that I keep forgetting the name of that I was talking about earlier? Clubhouse. Clubhouse is the app. So I started talking to her. She started giving me recommendations, telling me what I should try of theirs, telling me where I can meet somebody inside of Tokyo uh, of one of her friends who would have some four square. There you go, man. I got some inside the house. Uh, I think I was getting ready to say something. So this is definitely the most expensive thing that I have up here on this shelf right now. This rum cost me about uh Ichiman Nisen yen. It cost me twelve thousand twelve thousand Japanese yen, which is something like let's say it's something like a hundred and ten dollars. Pretty expensive for for a rum. I mean it's it's not like going to the supermarket and buying this Bacardi right there. Completely different flavor, but they serve two different purposes. So that's everything else on top of the Japanese whiskey. If you guys haven't seen that one yet, make sure that you guys go check out that video. Well, I think I'm about done with this recording. Uh, let's have one more sip. I wanna thank you guys. I get choked up with this stuff. I wanna thank you guys for watching. A salute to you wherever you may be out in the world. Uh, make sure that you drink responsibly. Before I even close out, like, comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff because I want to see you guys in the next one. I want to see you in the last one. Look at that video. Anyways, anyways, I'm done. I'm done. This has been my State of the Collection 2000.
and 22. All right, guys. Salute to you wherever you may be out in the world. And as always, gentlemen, you guys know what to do. Keep it classy.